Hello. Hey, Taylor. Hello, Michael. Good morning. <laughs> It is still morning for you, isn't it? Uh, it's for me. It's noon, so that's not not too bad, to be honest. Yeah. We'll give it a few minutes, everyone. If you can add yourself to the meeting notes. Um, notes and agenda posted in Zoom. If there's anything you'd like to discuss or have a conversation about, please add to the agenda. All right, so this is the third Monday at CNCF Telecom User Group. There's two meetings uh, twice a month, or two meetings a month that we have. The first Monday is at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and this meeting is at 7 p.m. Standard time, or 11 UTC. posted the meeting notes into Zoom chat. We also have a Slack channel on CNCF Slack, uh, Tug. And please join that if you can.
we have a GitHub as well. I'll post that to the chat. There's some, the meeting times and other information are there. All right. So does anyone have any agenda topics they would like to talk about? Hi, 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 Tara. This is Rabi from Vodafone. Hey, Rabi. Um, I'd like to just bring a, a question. I know, I'm not sure how for you guys are aware of CNTT activities. Something we start to look at is if you think about OpenNV, for example, we do have uh, groups within OpenNV and tooling to create an instance of the, the infrastructure, reference implementation, as we call them in CNTT. Uh, we're trying to figure out what would be the right way of creating a container-based implementation and have that as a reference implementation uh, that we could uh, make it compliant to the CNTT specification. Just a question to the group, if they are aware of any tooling or any ways of making that possible. It's a general question, um, just like for getting people's idea. All right. I, I wrote something in there, Robbie, if you could look and see in the notes, I captured what you're thinking. Uh, yes, thank you, appreciate that. I think there's probably several people on the call right now. I'm looking at like um, from Lidsey, hey Bill, and other folks probably could talk about tooling. Uh, from my understanding, there's going to be a lot of different pieces, so probably thinking multiple parts as far as uh, what could be um, what could be used, different alternatives for bringing up uh, pieces of. You're going to have the application side, and then the maybe the platform side would be the simplest. But even with that, you could start looking at a lot of different components. Um, that would be put together. And then there's probably a lot of options, but yeah. maybe some folks have some specific things. Um, and this probably is something to, I would recommend posting to the telecom user group mailing list so that folks that aren't on the call maybe could give some responses and feedback on that. Okay, sound good, thanks. Yeah, I guess um, if I can just jump in, this is Bill Mulligan from Lidsa. Uh, I know Taylor, you guys in uh, CNF testbed are currently using Cube Spray right now. Were you considering using Cube One? Um, so I know that those are both two tools. They're like available open source right now. And obviously there's a lot of other solutions um, on the market too. But I think yeah, it'd be good to get other people's opinions too. What might be good, Robbie, is to have um, a breakdown that's high enough level for people to get into and talk about um, some of the different parts. So you can say Cube Spray is going to bring up a cluster and a Kubernetes cluster with a few specific parts on that. It's not going to include. Um, let's say all the different things that are going to be needed in a maybe a production platform 
versus just saying the cluster itself? What are all the extensions to Kubernetes that you're going to install? And then there's a bunch of other parts. If I'm thinking of what is the CNTT looking at, it's the whole life cycle. So management and stuff of the cluster would be one part. And there's also management of the applications and a bunch of other things. Without looking at how would you design that, um, I, I'm stepping back and thinking, Robbie, you're saying, how would we even have a something to start playing with and and trying out? And I think is what you're asking versus how do we implement the whole thing since it hasn't been fully designed. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of something to, to start playing with, something to start with. And it's important for it to be open source. It is important for it to be an active project that we could yeah. maybe contribute to or adding some requirements and trying to mature it or evolve it to become the reference implementation for CNTT-based implementation. And that's basically to cover the operators' use cases that they are interested in. So a tool or a project with a GitHub repository to allow us to do that would be ideal. Yeah. Um, that's a, a great idea. And I, I think if, um, if you had some of the major components that you're looking at for RE2 um, described in mm -hmm. a higher level, then we could look at here's some tools that could fit for those parts. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of alternatives like the cube one can you can deploy clusters and manage um, the life cycle of say a a worker node and other parts and um, bringing them in and scaling them out so that may be something that's desired um, someone else may want to try something else for the uh, cluster provisioning or or whatever there's a lot there and then you can say here's another component that we need and here's a set of uh, tools that could be used for that um, yes. and if you start there then we could probably get a discussion happening on the mailing list and probably uh, slack as well would be a good place to post and link to a message about that as far as um, a, a github repo um, I think if we can get the conversation going, it's probably be interest in uh, various projects until you get something going. It may even be like a CNTT. My thoughts would be like a CNTT uh, org repo, just some type of example test lab or something to put something together might be a good place. Okay, that, that makes sense. So um, Tom and I will, will put something together and post it in Slack, and maybe we start a conversation by the mailing list. That sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. From the CNF testbed standpoint, I could see um, doing something more as an example. Um, here's some pieces that could work to if, if you're saying someone wanted to implement a platform um, in a specific way, then here's some pieces that you could uh, put together and do something that follows that specification. I could see that as, as a way to do it. That would be kind of, um, it's almost towards a reference implementation kind of prior to that, um, saying here's here's an example of some of the tooling and, and how we would recommend it, building it from starting from using cloud native principles. I wouldn't really want to think this is a reference platform though. So I think it's a good complement to what you're talking about though. And I'd definitely be interested in uh, chatting with you some more about that. Yes, uh, indeed. Uh, and, and to be fair, within CNTT, there's uh, what's called reference implementation, which I don't think this bid belongs in there. But also there's the reference certification where the testing is need to be happening. So I think 
mm-hmm. more discussion needed to see how that will align uh, to what we uh, intend to do in CNTT. But yeah, I, I agree to your point. I think certainly a lot of discussions need to be taken to understand where the, how they fit within uh, what we're trying to do in CNTT. Indeed. But I think from Beirut's point of view, if we get the reference limitation understood first or agreed on, um, that would be a great milestone. And then we can look at the certification and conformance aspect of this. Sounds good. I'm posting the GitHub CNTT um, link into Zoom chat for folks not familiar with that. Um, Robbie, would you mind just saying for folks that may not be familiar on this call, uh, real quick what CNTT is? Uh, yes, so CNTT stands for uh, Common NFDI TILCO uh, Task Force. And the intention behind that is to, bri- to provide a consistent implementation and architecture of uh, the infrastructure that runs both VNFs and CNFs. We do have two tracks uh, within CNTT, one targeting the VNF and using the OpenV ecosystem to create the reference implementation. Also, we have uh, a second track, uh, which is focusing on to, in the cloud native and containerized uh, platforms. And Tom Kivlin, he's in the call, he's the lead of the, uh, the reference architecture too, which is the Kubernetes-based reference architecture. So the intent here is to try to replicate what exists in OpenLV, but for containerized workload. And the intention is to kind of find a way to uh, implement the infrastructure based in the reference architecture too within CNTT, and also uh, trying to develop test cases and uh, conformance tests to start to certify and verify the infrastructure and with the workload running on top of that. And if you want to know more about it, please uh, feel free to visit the, the GitHub repo posted by Taylor and there's a meeting, a schedule that you can, you can participate and, and log in and dial in and see what's happening around there. Thanks, Robbie. All right. Let's see. Um, I think uh, unless someone has anything else, the other thing that we had um, is the white paper related to the Telcom User Group white paper, which specifically, I say the white paper, there's actually quite a few that have been um, being worked on. There's a white paper that's the Cloud Native Thinking for Telecommunications. And I'm going to post that link here. Chapter one has been um, being worked on for many, many months now, and to, uh, I think, move some stuff forward on that. Tom had some thoughts about maybe moving to GitHub, posting to the white paper folder on the tug uh, repo, and then creating some issues and PRs for making some updates on the final items. Um, I think that there's maybe a few of the pieces in the the paper on the uh, Google Doc, which I posted to the chat here, that are probably ready to close out. Uh, There's a lot of stuff that was kind of replacements on items that were agreed on in earlier parts that I can see, but didn't weren't clicked as resolved. Uh, so I need to go through that maybe with you, Tom, and make sure that we've closed out all that part so it doesn't, uh, if we can have it finished, 
But other than that, um, I think that was about my only thoughts. But do you want to talk about that for a minute, Tom? Yeah, I can do. Um, like you say, I've, I've copied it over as is at the moment. Um, <clears throat> as comments and suggestions are closed within Google Docs, we can easily modify the PR. And the idea was rather than having kind of lots of different comments and suggestions within a single Google document, you can, people can raise issues with regards to a particular sentence, statement, word, whatever, um, paragraph. And then that can be discussed within the issue and then the change made in a specific PR. I just think it will be a cleaner way to manage the document um, and version control it. Um, if, we're, if, we're, if we think we're at a stage where it's, it's ready enough to be kind of in, in a version control system. Um, that, that was the theory behind it. Um, and then similarly, when, you know, when people refer to what is the definition of a cloud native network function, in the same way that you know everybody just links to the CNCF definition of cloud native, we can have a similar, you know, everyone will link to sections of this document that describes what a cloud native network function is, and it becomes the, the definition. So that was that was the that was the idea. Um, you know, in terms of document management, we found it works quite well using GitHub in CNT and, and other areas. Um, so we'd be interested in people's feedback on that and whether or not they see that being a useful way of managing the document going forward. Um, oh yeah, and I can see Taylor's put the, the PR link up there, so go have a look to it then. I'm not expecting to merge right now. Like you say, we'll, we'll go through and, and get it ready before it is. Does anyone have any feedback on that? The white paper or moving to get him. Um, I would certainly support the move, um, moving it um, to GitHub. It's just, um, I think, a bit better to keep uh, control over the text. And I think particularly the content which uh, Tom posted so far is actually, I think, in a stage that um, GitHub would be the most more appropriate tool to handle it. So I think Taylor, uh, this is Ravi, for, for the purpose of this uh, white paper, chapter one, the content uh, Tom is proposing, uh, I think there's generally agreement on the content, so it might make sense just to push that and merge it. And if there's any change needed, then that will be following the PR process. At the moment, the PR is introducing that content. So I think once the content is in there, people can start adding their own um, PRs to change anything if they feel there's a need to, to do that. Is that the process we're trying to follow here or? Yeah, get an initial version, whatever that is. And there's been a few updates on the current PR, so maybe there'll be a, a few more based on what's been accepted, but not clicked resolved essentially. Uh, we, but otherwise have an initial version and then from there out do PRs for any new changes. All right. Any disagreement with moving to um, GitHub from Google Doc? 
I think maybe one positive would be um, folks who don't have access uh, to Google Docs. There's a lot of companies that are not able to access random organizations or uh, Google orgs, so they wouldn't be able to access. And there's a lot of uh, different reasons. So ideally, GitHub would give um, access for more people. So that would be a good thing. But if there's any disagreement, if you'd give a plus one in the doc, if you agree. For those uh, who have access to the meeting notes, please. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry for a quick question. It's it's late from Huawei. That I want to I want to uh, say. Uh, is there any uh, rules on this PR uh, thing? Because I don't know. Um, maybe how long should we wait for? Uh, you know, if there's any uh, comments or PRs uh, happen, or we just uh, I don't know the, how the schedule goes. Because um, it's like uh, when we are doing this uh, with uh, Google Docs, uh, we have many comments as well. But still, it's uh, it's um, it's just like uh, endless uh, questions in the comments. Yeah, that's a that's a good point and something that's come up in the CNTT before. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't own the repository at all, but I'm happy to have a chat with Taylor and come up with some really, really basic contribution guidelines and and that kind of you know, answers to that kind of question based on what we do elsewhere. Unless there already are some, Taylor, for sort of generic CNCF repository rules. So, yeah, we don't really have any rules right now on that. Um, I would say it's if it seems like we're getting enough uh, plus ones, um, then it's been more of the overall feel if it seems more towards, yeah, go ahead and merge it. It yep. may be better in the GitHub than it was in the Google Doc where it started to become so large that mm -hmm. it can be a little bit harder to tell where which direction it's leaning. Um, you can have a, someone that may put a whole lot of content and it seems like it's um, pushed more one direction, but you have several people that just gave a plus thumbs up or thumbs down. And, um, and then the history, once we close out a comment in Google Docs, you don't really see where that is. Um, so the conversations in in GitHub uh, for PR specifically, even more than say issues, uh, would be good. So maybe we'll get a little bit more of that fill, um, Lee. And I think the other thing would be even if we close stuff out, um, let's say over if we just said leave it there for a week or whatever it is, someone can come back in and create a new PR or we can add to the issue and the same issue and say, I don't think this is ready and here's some reasons or open another one and reference the old issues and you didn't lose the history. So it's probably not as um, a big a concern to, to close it sooner. Um, I agree that uh, GitHub is a much better uh, management tool. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. All right. So it looks like we have. I don't. I don't really see any negatives on getting something in there. Uh, Tom, I'll I'll work with you to maybe get some of the updates where they uh, should have been closed out and resolved in the Google Doc, just so yep. those are there and people don't have to go back and create PRs for what was agreed on. And, yep. and then we can get something merged in. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. 
So um, I don't think we have anything else here. Um, probably the only thing that I can think that we may have talked about if Dan was on the call was the CNF conformance. And I don't know how much he wants to go into that since it's kind of early. It's, uh, most of it's been mentioned before, but um, at a high level, talking about bronze, silver, gold, potentially for how the breakdown for certifications could be and, and what we're looking at. So there's some efforts to go along with the high level idea for kind of a plan for what could be testing. And um, probably the next call will maybe get into some of that. that the high level idea I guess right now is we're looking at adding having some tooling that can test the usage of say the Kubernetes APIs and how things are going to be running on the platform uh, validation and then how the applications run themselves um, and doing some testing along that and behave. And the difference here from, say, efforts on maybe some of the other certifications effort or the CNTT is it's focused more on are these things following cloud native principles? And are they utilizing stuff that would be expected in Kubernetes? And maybe some of the things like metrics and uh, and monitoring pieces that you could use different tools like Prometheus and Open Telemetry. And as far as uh, those type of tooling, how are you exposing the application platform? These are all initial um, ideas along to kind of move forward the thoughts for the gold, silver, um, bronze type. Um, ideas that would be potentially a test suite that could run and looking at ideally being able to run that on the CNF test bed. The, the end goal would be the test suite itself would be open source and available for anyone to download and run. Possibly it's going to end up having two parts, maybe completely separate, that looks at the actual NFE. I platform and then one that would be targeting stuff that's running on there. And we'd have to see where this has complements and overlaps with stuff like the NTT for looking at the RA2 and other efforts like what OPNFV does. Uh, that's about it. I'm not going to go into all the details right now because I know that it's up in the air and maybe I'll see where Dan is on, on that one to back. Um, I think that's it. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to talk about? Otherwise, I think we can give everyone back the rest of the hour here. I just sorry, I was on mute. So I just wanted to say I missed the call last week, um, so I didn't hear exactly what was talked about the the test suite stuff. But it was mentioned in Prague last week. I think in general, I think it could be really, really useful input into the so not not the RA two necessarily, but the reference certification that comes after. So the the point of RA two is to have something to test against, um, and the the reference certification will be not only certifying the workloads. Um, but also the platform, and I think the, the sort of tests and the test suites that you're talking about would be really useful input into that. Um, you know, like you say, to, to test the cloud nativeness of the workloads and and how and how cloud native the platform is in terms of you know standardised interfaces and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I, I think as a concept, I, I think it's a great idea. It'd be, be good to discuss it in more detail. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, I've, I've pointed this out before, the, the 
the cloud native um, definition and what I say a cloud native uh, NSCI platform would be and app, the cloud native applications that could serve telecom should encompass what um, CNTT is trying to do. So it's essentially a superset. So ideally the testing would say we meet all of the criteria for being cloud native. And then we also meet all the cr criteria for meeting Etsy and 3GPP standards and whatever else. It's a, a superset to whatever someone is wanting to implement and making sure that they meet that first. Mm -hmm. So being able to take that and build on it and say, here's the additional functionality that we want to ensure is working sounds like a good approach and that would be great if 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 we can um figure out how to make that work cool. okay yeah that'd be good we, we haven't kicked off the, the reference certification work yet but um i know we're going to be discussing it within the next week or so um so i'm not sure when the next tub is is it next week or the week after uh, sounds good week after we should have a something useful to talk about in terms of timelines for that and if, if you have some insight on when the next um, in-person meetings are going to be, that would be uh, really good to share. Um, one of the, specifically with this group, um, if you can add to, when you find out, or if you can add to the upcoming events, and that yep. way we can try to push that around. I know that it gets, um, a lot of this will get distributed to other CNCF groups and Slack channels okay. and the earlier the better for getting folks uh, all around the world of course uh, being able to travel uh, Where, where's, where's be best to post that like, obviously we can sort of spread it and put it in put it in the Google Docs meeting notes we can put it on Slack do you want it on the adjacent communities uh, bit in GitHub as well that would be useful yeah I'd, ideally the for specifically folks that want to uh, work with CNTT, if, if it's updated on like an events area in the CNTT GitHub um, or the wiki, the CNTT yep. wiki, either way. And then we could link back to that. So um, the upcoming events in the doc or whatever and, and being able to send people around would be great. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, the next um, meeting is on Monday, February 3rd at 8 a.m. Pacific. That's uh, 1600 UTC. So that's our later in the day call. Have a good one. Thanks, you too. Thank you, you too. Bye. Thanks, Thank Taylor. Bye. Bye.